All right, everybody, I'm live and uh, welcome, 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 everybody. I'm excited you guys are here for Facebook Live slash Average Sucks Show slash the middle of a whole crazy pandemic and uh, right before July 4th. So welcome, welcome, everybody. As you're jumping on, announce yourself. Let me know you're here. Take about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm excited about the topic and welcome, welcome, everybody. Chris Malark, welcome, my man. If you get a minute, if you get a minute, we can uh, post some stuff down below. Core is going to be coming up in October live. We've got Core at Home, uh, July 10th, which I'm excited about. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us right now, take a couple seconds and you want to share this with people that you care about. If you're watching it inside the Average Sucks community, you have to either welcome them to join the community or you could find this on my personal page or my fan page and you can share that link. Hopefully someone from my team can go ahead and grab the link from the fan page put it down below for each and every one of you as you're jumping on uh let me know you're here and i'll get a peek and see who's out here saying hello and if you, you might have to click a little button to let me know who you are because i'm doing this through Streamyard and i can't see everybody's name so uh, if you have somebody you care about use the at sign throw it down below and welcome them to this if you're watching this again inside the average sucks community um you're not gonna be able to share outside of it it's our private group and if you guys want to join that private group, feel free to check it out, Average Sucks Community Online. So welcome, everybody. I'm very, very excited about today. I'm going to get started in about 35 uh, seconds, maybe a minute right now. And we finished up Call to Action a couple of days ago. It was absolutely incredible. An incredible group of human beings have joined us. And what I want to do is take two seconds right now and share this on your wall. This is going to be a really different type of a a process that I'll be sharing with you today, a very different type of a Facebook Live than I'm normally used to doing. And I'm excited about sharing uh, the information with you. So take a couple seconds, click the like button, click the share button, put this on your wall. And then somebody from my team is going to grab the fan page version of this and put it down below in the comments. So you can take that and you can share that with somebody you care about if you're watching this inside of the Average Sucks community. So, hmm. Welcome, welcome, everybody. And if you take a couple seconds, give me a thumbs up. Give me a yes. Give me I'm ready. And um, let's get let's get rocking and let's get rolling. So I want to welcome all of you to the Facebook Live. And this is going to be a very, very personal conversation today for a lot of reasons. I finished Call to Action here a couple of hours ago. We were doing our question and answer call this morning. And we had incredible human beings that lives have changed dramatically through the last couple of days. And here we are right now, I'll stamp and date this. Uh, the beginning of July, we got July 4th. I want to welcome all of you to that are part of um, our country. Happy July 4th tomorrow. Happy uh, Canada Day to those of you a couple days back. Forgive us if we missed it and any other people that are just celebrating an incredible weekend. It's a weekend of freedom. It's a weekend of independence. It's a weekend of remembering. And if you haven't taken a minute just to appreciate you know, what we have as a world today, even the fact that we're able to communicate this way, take a minute and go, all right, well, a lot of crazy stuff's happening in the world right now. Yeah. Yet we do have um, we do have freedoms and we do have challenges. And we have stuff, but we also have freedoms and how you choose to deal with the different challenges that you have in your life. So here we are, the middle of June, and I've been doing a lot of Facebook lives since all of this began. I feel like we're watching some crazy sci-fi movie, like before it began, the thing began. And I've done a ton of Facebook lives and I shared a lot of things over time. And I was under the impression when all of this started that there was gonna be pretty much an end date. It was gonna take a couple of months. We were gonna have some tough times. The economy was gonna take a hit. There was gonna be some challenges. Unfortunately, people get sick. Horrible things have happened since then. I've had a lot of friends and family members and different types of things have been through all kinds of stuff from economic challenges to you know physical challenges different types of things and i was under the impression when this all started where we we're gonna have some challenging times we were gonna have to work on some stuff it was gonna be here for a while but I had no idea that we were going to be dealing with what we're dealing with right now. I, I thought it was the end of my daughter's school year. Tara was going to go home from college. We were going to figure it out. Everything will be good around September. Maybe we have to last through the election. And here we are in the middle of this where a media storm is going all over the world right now. I don't have to tell any of you this that we're dealing with challenges and we're right in the middle of it again. So what I thought was going to be the end, uh, all of us are sitting here in what I would call the middle ground of, of what's going on. And a lot of people are asking questions like, what do I do? 
what is the next thing I do? Um, how do I feel safe? You know, what could happen? What do I tell my kids? What's going on? And when I originally got on the Facebook Lives originally, that was one of the big things that I was doing was I was figuring out how to offer as much guidance and support for people as possible. Because, you know, one of the things that we do at our house is, you know, we sit around the table. I don't know if Deborah's got a sign that says, you know, families that eat together, stay together. We spend a lot of time where family loves to have dinner together. You know, we got everyone's got different schedules, different things going on. But a lot of times around the kitchen table or we sit around, we have like a bar area in the kitchen. Uh, we sit around and we discuss different topics. I've had everything with helping my oldest teenager navigate with friends. I've had people, uh, my, uh, uh, my littlest one, navigate different things. Deborah and I have talked about tough business decisions, things we've had to do. And one of the things that I recognized at the end of the day, human beings are typically seeking guidance uh, from each other. They want to, they want to answer things. So what I recognized was that right now in what's going on in the world, that's one of the big things that people are looking for. They're looking for somebody with some answers. And I, I, I joke around with a lot of friends. Hey, did you figure it all out? Did you get all the answers yet? And I'm going to tell you, I don't have all the answers for what's going on. I wish I did. If I did, I, I definitely would be giving them all to you, the people I care about. If you guys want answers, give me a thumbs up. I'd love answers, right? You can give me a thumbs up right now if you'd want that in the middle of this, wake up some people on Facebook. But all I can tell you right now up to this point is what I've been doing, what the pros and cons have been of what we've been doing and make some recommendations. At the end of the day, I treat my our business uh, no different than my life. And as an entrepreneur, if any of you can relate to this, you can give me a thumbs up or a yes, that there really isn't a turnoff point as an entrepreneur. You, you are what you are. You do what you do. It's in your blood. It's in your nervous system. It's who you are. You know, it's not something like you turn off. It's not a nine to five thing. It's, it's a permanent every day. You dream about your business. You think about your business. You think about the things that you're doing, no matter who it is. I've noticed this as doctors. I've seen it as lawyers. I've seen it as people that are coaches. I've seen this as the Mary Kay lady. You, you look at what you do. It is what it is. And, and that's how you live your life. It's one of the things we chose when you decide to be an entrepreneur, I would say I was bit by the bug. Like I'm here to make a difference in the world and help people. So I think entrepreneurism from, from the whole model is not just about making money. It's about finding a way to truly uh, make a difference inside of, inside of people's lives and help them out as much as possible. So all I can do is, is really just find a way to share with you what we've been doing. So over the course of the last, and I can't think how long this has been. It's, it's fascinating. It's, it's, I ask people all the time, like, how long have we been dealing with this? The world, the way it is right now, masks and no masks and arguing with your friends and pandemics and people race uh, challenges amongst people and brothers and sisters fighting. It's like we're dealing with almost like a civil war just on social media. Like, who was your friend last week? You got to be worried about what you post and what you do. And the world has changed very, very dramatically not just the Corona part, just how we interact with each other as human beings. I had no idea. If you would have asked me, hey, Michael, where do you think we're going to wind up come mid-July? I would have been like, I, I could give you 500 answers. I never would have thought exactly here, but here we are. And I think we learn a lot from our past. We learn back from what's working. And I figured what I'll do here right now is I could share with you a little bit about what we've been up to, what we've been doing that's helping, and a little bit about that. And also maybe at the end, you know, answer a couple questions for you guys. So when this all hit, uh, Deborah and I looked at each other, my wife, we looked at each other and we said, we got to find a way to help as many people as possible. And just so you guys understand the context of this, my heart goes out to every business owner in the world right now. We've got gym owners that are refusing to close here in town and my heart's with you. I got people that are scared those gyms are going to be open. My heart's with you as well because I get it. I, I understand the different sides of the fence that all of us are on. So for years, people would say to me, like, hey, Michael, what would it feel like if you couldn't do what you do? And these were a lot of times people in regulated industries. I had friends that were in the mortgage business that would say to me, Michael, um, what would you do if you couldn't do what you do anymore? And I'm like, well, how could I not do what I do anymore? Like, like, what are they going to ban talking? Like, that's impossible. And these are people that's rules changed. Like after the last uh, economic crisis, I had great friends in the mortgage and the real estate business, they couldn't do what they did. No one wanted to buy houses at a time. You know, the mortgage rates, everything changed. You know, the rules on how you get commissioned, all of it went away. I had friends that couldn't do what they do anymore. Like people like literally got obliterated their industry. And I never thought to myself, and maybe this is my own naiveness, that 
we could be affected too. So for the last almost 20 years, those of you that know me or don't know me, the biggest thing that we did is we helped people. It started off with working with people one-on-one -on -one in person. Then it went to group events I would do in person, small events. I'd meet at people's events and do things. Uh, we would do, do telecalls for people. And then eventually we got really, really serious about what we were doing in the last three years, 2017, it got crazy. Like I'm in it right now. We bought a multi-million dollar building that's an event space that is designed to do small events. It was designed, it was an investment for our business. We were super excited about it. We were stoked. We were throwing events and like, this is it. We'll bring people to us. This will fit our life. Everything's going to back off mute. Okay. Something happened, triggered on my end. So what I recognized is, thank you so much. So what I recognized, I'll backtrack a little bit. I lost audio, but I just want, and you guys got to hear me, which is super, super cool. So my sound is back. And the one thing is that what I recognized, I'm going to go backtrack a little bit so we can put this whole thing together is that our big thing was we got this building and we've got all this stuff that we're going to do to help people, but we can't use it. Like I'm literally, what? I have no sound. Okay, I have sound, I'm on audio. They can hear me. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Uh, hear me now? I believe they can hear me. I need to make certain. You guys are a couple seconds behind. Okay, I think they can hear me now, right? Can you guys hear me? If you can, say you hear me? You can hear me, great, you can hear me. Okay, they're a couple seconds behind. Okay, so I wanna make certain we got you. So we buy this building and I'm gonna backtrack. So all of you with ADD right now, um, all of you with ADD, you gotta pay attention to this. So we buy this gorgeous building, spend millions of dollars buying a building, renovate the place, make it everything we wanted it to be. So people can come in, they could spend time. If you've been to the building, give me a thumbs up. We know you've been here before, you, you've been in our facility before. So what happens is, um, what happens is that we build this whole idea and my heart goes out to all of these people because you've got a restaurant owner out there in the world that can't do what their dream was. They invested all this money, all this time, went to school, borrowed money, and they can't do what they want to do. I never thought in a hundred million years that I thought in a million years that I was going to run into, um, I was going to run into a challenge at all, like at all with being able to do this. So I said to myself, I said, man, what are we going to do? I got an event in May. I got hundreds of people scheduled, hotels that we've got to talk to. What are we going to do? And one of the things I recognized is in life, we can fight as people for what we want, but a lot of times we can't fight what is. And what I mean by that is we had to say, okay, it's not what I asked for. This is not at all what it is that I want, but I've got to figure out what we need to do. So when Deborah and I sat down, we're like, wait a second, we've got a real problem here. We are no different than those mortgage people that can't do the mortgages right now. We're no different than the real estate people that can't do the real estate. The thing we do is we're people that meet and they're saying we can't meet. So I said, what can we do? Well, what is it we want to do? And we love helping people. I do it at my dinner table with my family. I do it around later that night if we stay up late and we talk with the kids on, on what's going on. It's the thing that we do. We love helping people. And when I talk about an entrepreneur, a real entrepreneur, I've noticed who they are and what they do business-wise, they all like mingle with each other together. So our crazy idea that we had, and we spent a lot of money doing this, was we want to find a way to help as many people as we can. So we literally gave away a program. We started in March, which is a crazy idea. Can we give away a program for absolutely free to anybody that's willing to invest the most powerful asset they have is time. So we said, okay, we're gonna give this away. This was not a business model idea. This was just, what do we do? Because we were gonna talk to people. We were going to help people. We were going to do events. We can't. So we said, how do we go to people? 
So for years, we were, we were marketing a program called Call to Action. So in a moment, we literally cut the ability to sell it. We gave it away for free. I spent money on Facebook, giving it away for free, sharing with people, wanting to help them out. And sure, I have other programs that we sell, but we gave it away. And one of the things we learned from doing this was no different than a real estate agent having the time to show houses to people or an investor going over properties. We just shared with people what we do. We shared to people what's going on. And we literally no strings attached gave away these programs to as many people as we could. And one of the things we recognized out there in the world is human beings, they're, they're looking for guidance. They're looking, looking for answers. And part of why I'm doing this today is just giving you my inside look of what's going on is that people are saying to, to you like, hey, what do I do? How do I do what's next? Um, how, what, what's the thing that we need to do that, that, that I should be thinking about? You know, do you mind giving me advice? Do you mind giving me answers? And literally for the last five months or four months, however long this, this crap's been going on, that's all we've been doing almost every other week at the sake of my vocal cords, at the sake of the time with our family and everything. We're like, how many people we help in the help point now? I can tell you what's going on in the world. There's people that are scared, confused, nervous, but underlying, they still have, there's still some incredible human beings in this world that have a ton of hope inside that truly want to make their businesses, their lives and everything work in a big way. And what I've noticed from this is people are looking for light. They're looking for somebody to connect with. The whole world is not negative. Not everybody's looking to bitch and complain on your Facebook wall of what's going on. There's some great people out there. But I'm also going to tell you that one of the things that I recognize, and I see someone here, they paid 600 bucks for that program years ago. One of the things that I, that I recognize from this is you can't keep everybody happy. And especially when the world is upset and things are going on. I mean, some of the stuff that I've seen occur was absolutely incredible. I literally will do the call. I get up in the morning. You know, Maya gets up before all of us. I don't know if you guys can figure out how to get kids to sleep later. I don't even know. We we buy her a fancier bed because it's better for her back. And she wakes, she sleeps great through the night. And now she pops up at five o'clock in the morning. Our calls would start at 7 a.m. We spend time with her. I say, give her a hug. Daddy, go help some people. I walk up to my office. I do my thing. And I give it everything I got for three hours, like all of you like giving every single thing that you've got for what you do. And I, to, to, at the end, I get applause. People are happy. People making a difference, posting on Facebook. Thank you, Michael. This is great. And then I go to my inbox and literally there's nothing you can do about these people. I mean, there's some guy that says you are a scam and literally subject, you're a scam. And then like my heart goes, well, what did I do? He goes, I'm on your course right now. And I'm trying to speak up. This is not live. This is a laugh track. You've got people on. You're trying to scam people. You're awful. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm taking time away from my family. I'm trying to help people. No one's paying me to do this. And I'm getting this reaction from people. I'm getting people saying, hey, Michael, um, when are you going to teach me what I need to know? I need to make money in business. And here we are, a company that's made tens of millions of dollars. You're new in business. And I'm getting this crap from people. And I realized like, these people exist in the world. There's no way to get around them. And one of the guidances that I'm going to tell you is that they're showing up a little bit more. You have to have love and care for them. I did give Deborah the email and she replied back like, cause she's very defensive over people looking at this way with us. But it was, I was bothered at first. And the reason I'm bothered, it's like you give, you give, you help, you help, but there's no way to keep everybody happy. And that's one of the things I was going to tell you right now is that in this world, there's no way to keep everybody happy in this world at all. The biggest thing you can do is figure out how many people you can help and how you can build your business and do the things you're doing at the same time. So of course, I'm giving away something absolutely free, helping people out as much as I can. If they want to do something else, they can. That's great. Completely up to them. But at the end of the day, I think there's a large variety of people here in this world that they're looking to be bothered. They're looking to be offended. And if I can give you any advice for them is that you're never going to be able to avoid all of them. But you do have to understand that they do exist in the world. We're also not here to flip them and change them. We are here to understand that they exist. So I see this in my life and I'm giving advice to to my, my Tara also, my oldest. And, I'm, and I never even got a chance to tell her about this. But here's a kid that literally in the middle of no pandemic goes out and goes get a job. And what I'm so excited about, she's want to support this lady's company, help her out as much as possible, help her build her business. And she's getting the same thing where people are coming in and they're saying, Hey, you know, they're selling masks at the store, which is great. The gorgeous store, a little plug for, for them over rolling rack here in Scottsdale. But the one thing I was going to tell you is they're selling masks, a big old sign that says, if you're going to try it on, you bought it. 
please, please. And people arguing and fighting want to be wrong and complaining and what's going on. And I'm realized none of us are immune to this as business owners, but I'm also going to tell you it's a great gift to build our skill. One of the things I realized before all of this happened, and people told me this a long time ago, they said, they said, if you're not offending a few people or have a few people mad at you, you're not doing really a big job and you're definitely not playing big enough. So over the course of the last couple of months, one of the things I recognized is you can't help everybody, but you can do your best to help those that are in front of you. And the big question is, how do you get in front of more people doing what you do? And also, how well can you deal with challenges that show up? So one of the things that I figured out from, from all of this stuff that was happening was I noticed that people... We get bothered as entrepreneurs when things don't go our way. And I realized that all of us are dealing with right now, not doing it the way we want to do it. But it's the ability to adapt and pivot and follow all of this that really offers the ability to make probably the biggest difference that we need to make in our businesses and our lives and is the ability to adapt to what's going on and find a way to do what you do in a different media and in a different way. So although we couldn't do the physical live event that we wanted the hotel, the hotel wouldn't even let us do it. I might've even have done it. People maybe have wore a hazmat suit. I would have done the event just to deliver because that's how much I care. The hotel said we're closed. We're not even going to open. We're not even going to allow you in the room with your people, even if you wanted to do it. So I said, hey, how do I broadcast and bring it to as many people as possible? So the big the big thing that I, I get from from all of this is that... I've worked harder in the last four months, I can't even figure out the time anymore, than I have probably in the last five or six years. And it got me to realize that, was I not working hard prior? I don't know if that was the answer. Am I doing it to help? Yes. Am I doing it because it's necessary? I don't know what the answer is to that question. But if you're feeling inside of yourself that you're working harder than you've ever worked before in your life, Maybe it's because it's our time as human beings to push ourselves, to grow what our muscles are inside, to help ourselves more than we normally do. And the one thing that I've picked up from pretty much everything that we've got going on and everything that, we, uh, that we've recognized is we all get to a time in our lives where we can't do the thing that we want to do. The whole problem is we're all there globally right now as people. Every single one of us is dealing with this at the same time. So my question for you is, what can you do and what can't you do? And there's very, very few benefits for focusing on what you can't do. And if you want to argue or put up a fight, you can. That's that's something that a lot of us have the ability to do. They can do that. Um, they can argue. You can put up a fight. You can do that. If that's in your nature and that's who you are as a person, I support you if that's the thing you're doing. But for now, as humans, one of the things that I'll throw at you, and feel free to share this with anybody you care about. If you like anything I'm saying, give it a like, give it a love, give it a comment. If any of this is resonating uh, with you right now. And the biggest reason is it wakes up Mark Zuckerberg. It lets him know, hey, we're doing this thing right now. And it tells him that, you know, pour a little effort and pour a little love into this Facebook Live that you're watching here right now. Our book launched in, in the middle of this as well. And it did not go, I, I had a big plans for that. I, I had big plans of what we were going to do. And one of the big plans I had is we were going to do signings. We had bookstores that were going to be lined up and we were going to do stuff. We were all excited, all the stuff we're going to do. And like literally could not do all the things. I got so excited. If, if you don't have this yet, I highly recommend get the book. We're, we're giving away just because we can't physically hand this to you right now. Um, we can mail it to you, but definitely check out averagesucks.com. Get the book and read it. Because one thing that I learned from the book is writing it was, I, I don't know if I pictured this in people's minds, is that adversity is one of those things that get us to grow as people. It's a second chapter of the book and how to utilize adversity to your advantage. And I've had so many people say to me, Michael, this is the perfect book for this timing right now. It didn't show up the way I wanted to, but here I am, I read a chapter on the benefits of adversity and then we're living in a world of adversity right now that's causing challenges for people all over the place. So what I figured, I would just tell you again one more time what we've been doing. We've been serving and helping as many people as we can. We have the inability to keep everybody happy. It's impossible. There's not a thing we can do. I've also realized from that, I'll get an Uber Eats that delivers something to my house. They screw up. They make a mistake. I don't even know if they screw up. They, they just never went into business to do Uber Eats. I don't write a Yelp. I don't complain at them. I don't bitch. I don't whine because it didn't wind up the way it was supposed to be. I just accept they're doing the best they've got with what they've got. So for me right now, our biggest thing is how many people can we help 
How many people can we get in front of them? Because at the end of the day, it's about keeping the machine going. And I believe if you can keep your machine going, you can find a way to make money. But you got to find a way doing what you're doing as easy as possible. And some of you, but Michael, it's easy for you to say because you can do your phone over the over the telephone. I didn't plan on doing this. I planned on I bought a building. This was not built in my plans. I, I was getting everyone to come here. I started getting where you guys were going to come see me. We we're doing three hours, and we had to shift our radical perspective in our lives. That's been our biggest biggest thing that we learned over time is that giving away what it is that we do has been our greatest gift, our greatest gift back to people. It's been some of the most fulfilling four months of my life, the hardest four months that I've ever had probably in my life business-wise, running from one thing to another. It's been taxing in so many ways in my life. But I also know that when we get through all this hard work, it's going to feel like weights came off. And the reason why is those of you that are running and pushing and going hard right now, one of the things that I believe to be true is we're going to really dominate out there. So for months, I've been saying that all of us are going to be judged. And what I mean by judged is, is the decisions that you make over this time, they're going to show up in your life in, in a big way. And what I mean by show up in your life is the decisions that you make today, how hard you work, how hard you push, those are going to show up in your life over the course of the next five or 10 years. So the other thing I recognize from working and teaching people during call to action, and folks, if you haven't taken call to action yet, I'll pop the link down below. It's call to action time.com. I'm still giving it away for free for at least the end of this month. We're not going to do that forever, but our team will put that down below call to action time.com. Click the link. If you're serious about it, I'd love to work with you. I'd love to help you out. I also want to share it with your friends and family because the one thing I recognize is people are looking for guidance right now. I'll say it again one more time. I, I All I can picture is my table at, at, at the house and I picture my daughter doesn't have answers and she wants them. And I realize that's the world we're in right now. People are looking for somebody to give them some answers. And one of the biggest reasons why we have a responsibility to do well in business now and to keep your business going and do the things that are necessary to do is because somebody's looking up to you and they're, they're dying and looking for leadership more than ever. More than ever have human beings wanted leadership um, right now in, their, in the world. And it's been a big, big gift that I could tell all of you that you could offer the people you care about. And maybe the leadership is sharing this video. I'll have my team post down below um, how to find this, that they can grab it out of the, the, my personal fan page and put it down below. Maybe grab a click on it, share it with somebody you care about. Maybe your leadership, maybe you can't help somebody personally, but you could bring somebody to the help. So I don't think business has ended. I don't think pivoting is the word right now. I think the big word right now is really getting honest and real with what's going on and what's worth the fight and what's not worth the fight. And that's one of the things I recognize is you're either going to argue and complain with people that want to argue and complain. And one of my mentors taught me a long time ago is that whenever you're arguing with somebody, there's always two fools arguing. There's no need to argue. You're entitled, as I heard Tony Robbins say this recently, you're entitled to your opinions, but not for your own manufactured facts. So I believe we're in this for the long haul this year. I believe that I don't know Corona. I can't speak for any of that. I'm not here to be negative or positive on any of this, but we're going to be at this, at each other a little bit through the election and different things. And one of the things we can do as an entrepreneurial group is to come together and figure out how do you make your business work the way you want it to so you can find ways to make a difference out there in the world. So what I wanted to do is just open up for questions. I've been helping everybody on call to action and doing that that way. I haven't been on the Facebook wall in a long time. I haven't been on the podcast in a while. I figured I'd help as many people as we can help right now. So again, one of the ways I want to help you is definitely check out call to action. The other thing is definitely want to get my book average sucks.com. Get it right now. Buy a couple copies, buy this for somebody you care about, buy five copies, um, get the digital copy. You could send it to someone. I found that through Amazon for nine bucks. You could send this to somebody right now, put it in their mailbox. Say, I'm thinking about you. I love you. I want this for you. I had somebody mail me a book. Somebody sent me Simon Sinek's book the other day, a great human being sent me this book. So people love when you do things for them. I'm also going to tell you, Oh, this is a big thing that I learned. One of the gifts that I got from Call to Action, I said this this morning on the group, is here's the gift that I feel like I've given the world. And, and I want to help you give this gift out, gift out as well. I've helped a lot of people get off of social media and get off of the news. So in two or three hours a day, not only have I taught people really incredible stuff through a five-day telecoaching live program, I've gotten people away from the news 
gotten them away from the media. I've gotten away from things that are holding them back, negativity. So one of the things I'll tell you is that if you want to help make a difference out there right now, one of the things you can do is without being a jerk about it, telling them it's your intention, get them that book, send them to Facebook Live, recommend call to action, pick up the phone, open up your messenger, tell somebody about it, spend a few minutes on the phone with them, telling them the benefit of it. Here's what starts to happen. You get people off of social media and the negativity of the Facebook wall, Corona, conspiracy, all that stuff, and you get them into something useful. So if I could tell you that's been my big piece of the puzzle, my most fulfilling part is finding ways to get people away from the noise and away from the garbage. And I'll tell you as an entrepreneur, that's one of the things that you're going to want to do. I taught a whole group in our business success GPS class a couple of weeks ago, how to make your own media. And the reason we have to learn how to make our own media is everybody's obsessed with media right now and they go in news cycles. And right now it's Corona as you're watching this is doubling, tripling, quadrupling and every phone call. And it's like every word comes up. It's like you're, it's like Mexico back in the day, people handing you a Corona. Now everybody's handing you a Corona conversation. It's not a beer anymore. It's a conversation and it's happening all over the place for everybody. So I'm going to ask you to think about this. How do you disconnect from the conversation? How do you get around people that are thinking differently? How do you help a few people you care about thinking differently? And if we can slowly do this, I found myself getting sucked into it as well. The conversation, the fear, the worry, scrolling the wall, checking up on stuff. And I never watched this stuff at all. And then I had to recognize that it's attractive. We look at it because it's attractive and it's something that we want to know about and we want to be part of it. But I'm here to tell you something very interesting. If you disconnect for a good couple of weeks, you're going to be okay. Something bad enough, somebody's going to come tell you something bad enough that happens in the world. Maybe you can watch eight or nine minutes a day, something like that. But I'm also going to tell you it's a never-ending cycle that's never going to go away. I'm also going to tell you that when you do separate, you are going to find yourself other people to connect with that don't have those conversations. When I stopped drinking, one of the things I thought when I quit drinking was that, oh my God. Who am I going to hang out with? And then I realized after enough time, it may be uncomfortable for a couple of weeks. I've, all my friends now don't really drink. Some do, some don't. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to judge anybody for doing it. But here's the craziest part. When you stop something, eventually you attract a whole nother crew of people to do something else. So my guidance for you, every one of you is pick your battles. You're not going to keep everybody happy. Reduce the arguing as much as possible. Understand that those people, hurt people, hurt people are going to be out there. I've gotten so many things. I had a lady go on our, our Facebook wall the other day in the middle of a course. She loved it. She thought it was absolutely amazing. And then she goes, hey, when's it going to get to the point? I love the last three days, but when's it going to get to the point today? I'm like, I forgot I needed to be perfect for you. I forgot. Forgive me. Um, I missed something for you. And then you look up who somebody is and not to judge. They're great people. It's a great person, but they're not where they want to be in their life. So projection right now is a big thing and we got to watch out because we're projecting our own fears a lot of times onto other people so i figured um what i would do right now is open up if anyone's you're enjoying this give me a like i'm enjoying this give me a hashtag average sucks give me a, a share i would love 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 if you would take this and share it i mean one of the greatest things that gifts you can give me if i've ever given you a gift in your life is three things a like a heart a share you do that it helps get the message out there to the world. I want to help as many people as we can. Number two, think about somebody you care about in your life. If call to action made a difference, we're giving it away. Help us do it. We've spent a fortune giving away call to action because that's what we decided to do. We want to help as many people as we can. It's a new thing we're doing. We're excited about it. It's helping people at the freight of the expense of it. But also the other thing that's going on is we got to deal with some I don't say troublemakers, but challenging people in life. But I'm also going to realize it's making me stronger. It's making me realize that can't keep everybody happy. But the ones you love, the ones you can keep happy, make the biggest, biggest difference. So I was going to open up for any questions you guys have about your business or your life. You can post them in down below. Um, anything you'd want to know about anything that I'm doing, um, anything that I've seen people doing. I've also been coaching and working with hundreds of businesses right now through all of this right now. And I've seen everything you could ever imagine that people are doing. But I am going to tell you, the people that are doing great right now are deciding to do great right now. And the people that are complaining 
are deciding to complain. Remember, you're an entrepreneur and nothing can get in your way. You built strong. The reason you're built strong is because that's who you are. That's who you've always been. You're a strong person. You've got it inside of you. But the advice I'd give anybody right now, if anybody asks me, like, what do I do business-wise? And the answer is, do business. Do business. And what I mean by that is, what is business? Help people solve problems and you will be compensated. I'm going to say it again. Help people solve problems and you will be compl- you will be compensated. It may get complicated. That word almost snips up off my tongue. I will tell you to remember that the word sales comes from the Latin or Norse word sale, which means to serve. Our job is not changed. It's to serve the public. And this is why it was so painful for me when I found out about business owners. Our whole purpose is to serve the public. And then we're told by the public we can't serve. It's so painful to look at that a, that a restaurant just wants to serve the public. The painter just wants to serve the public. The, the preschool just wants to serve the public. That's what they're made to do. And they're told they can't serve. And I'll tell you, that's no different than somebody going to become a Navy SEAL or a military person or somebody that we that helped us get freedom in the world said, sorry, you cannot do your job anymore. You're not allowed to serve. It would be painful to watch and painful to experience. So if you're getting that feeling inside of your heart, like, man, it just sucks. Can't do what I want to do. Just know how much your heart wants to give, how much your heart wants to serve, how much your heart wants to give to people you care about. So if your pain is not necessarily just economic, it's that you know you can do more, but you're being told you can't. And the one thing I learned about entrepreneurs, we've all been told we can't a lot of times. And a lot of us have found this from our parents. And as kids, we were told we can't. And what I've learned about a lot of entrepreneurs, we know how to break the rules. And I'm not talking about the governmental rules. I'm asking you to break the rules that you created for yourself. See, for me, I created rules. I created a lot of rules in my life. And some of the rules that I created were, this is how you do it. This is how this works. This is how this happens. And I've recognized it's time to develop a new set of rules. And some of my new rules are, this is the way we get our point across. This is the way we help people. This is the way that we connect. This is what happens. So my biggest rule in life right now is help as many people as you can and everything's going to be okay. That is our outcome. That is our business model. That is what we were going to do. And we are going to serve and give as much as we can. And I want to think about what is that model in your business? What's that model in your life? So I'm here for questions if you guys have them. Um, I'm also going to just going to highly recommend um, Average Sucks, as I always say it, get the book. Uh, definitely want to join me for uh, for call to action. I'm doing it live. If you've never taken it, like, what the hell are you talking about? Go to the website. It explains the whole thing. Uh, call to action time.com. My team will put it down there, but I'm open for any questions you guys have. And here's the format of the questions. What do I do? Maybe you got a question about your business. I'd love to give you some coaching and guidance right now. I just wanted to take a minute and tell you what I'm up to and what I've been doing. I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys. I've been so damn busy. Um, what's going on? Jan, I'm so glad you like it. Chris, I'm glad you love it. Jeannie, uh, Danielle, I'm glad you love it. Got my friends Hintwater out here. If you haven't had this stuff, it's amazing. She shifted her business. Uh, you can check it out. Delivering uh, this to your house. This is my favorite right now. Honey crisp apple. Hmm. Water with a hint of flavor. Absolutely amazing. So um, check out Hint if you haven't yet. I love this stuff. But um, I'll be on their podcast here next week. So uh, yeah, so any questions or anything anybody wants to share? Uh, I got a little bit of a delay on my end, but I can definitely answer your guys' questions. If you're liking this, please, I ask, give it a like or a love. I'm not going to beg you to do it. I'm also going to tell you, check out our podcast if you haven't been there. I believe it's tinyurl.com forward slash average sucks. We'll take you there. Also check out our Average Sucks community. I'd love to have you join. Um, Someone could put that down below is how to get into the Average Sucks community, which is really, really incredible. And does anybody have any questions or anything for Michael? I mean, I I look at this as a coaching moment to help you. But giving away free stuff for half a year right now, might as well just keep on doing it. Help you guys as much as we can. It's a very congruent thing for me. How can I help you in your business right now? And if not, I'll give you my final words that I figured out. So you like him too. I'm glad you like it. Um, It's not fizzy. Oh, she has a fizzy one too, uh, if you want also. So I'm glad you like it. Anybody else have a question? Um, Please link to the podcast. I'd love to do that. 
Um, if my team can do that, I believe it's tinyurl.com forward slash average sucks, S-U-X or S-U-C-K-S. Um, we can give you the link directly to the podcast. Check it out. I love that. Um, we got some really, really great stuff going on. This will be part of that as well. And the other thing I'll leave you with this last thought, if we don't wind up with questions, if a question comes up, I'll, I'll get in the middle of my thought. Here's my thought I have for all of you. Um, it's a big thought and it's a big one today. A lot of times, whenever we deal with challenges in life, like the one we're dealing with, a lot of us go back in time to how we started what we do in the first place, whether it was your business or your marriage or your career, whatever it is. And we go back in time and we think we've got to start all over again. And we think that we've got to, we've got to do this thing and we've got to, we've got to commit or whatever it is we're going to do to the way we used to do it. And I think very few people give themselves credit for what they've done. Every one of us is here surviving, have survived and have figuring it out right now. So my question for you is, what does somebody your age that's currently dealing with what you're dealing with right now, that's been in business or at a career as long as you've been, what can that person do with your current circumstances? See, for me, if I go back to how I started the business, I get rid of the, the building, I, I uh, eliminate my family, everything's gone, I'm back at the be beginning, I'm 23 years old again, it's not the place to begin. The place to begin is today. What does a person, like I look in the mirror, what does a 42-year-old guy do that's in the last several months helped thousands and thousands and thousands of people look at their lives differently, made a lot of people happy, assisted a lot of people, and had a few people that were bothered, but I think they were bothered before they found me. What can that person do moving forward? See, I'm looking to build upon what's going on right now, and I'm not looking to avoid it. I'm looking to build upon it. All the rubble and the challenges and different things that we're dealing with right now, I'm looking to stand on top of it because it's got a chance to make us taller, a chance to make us better. So here's my little recommendation for you. Avoid the media. Help other people avoid the media without telling them you're helping them. Send them things to read and look at. Great suggestions. Average sucks. Get them on call to action. Give them a copy of this. Let them hear my podcast. Share some great, great news with people. Number two advice is build upon what it is that you have. How do you make it better? I'm using this time to make my life and my business better not to be the same person. There's that feeling you get, which average sucks is about where the old you comes in. And I feel it from time to time because I look down at the building and I'm like, man, I just can't wait till we do events again. But the answer is we can't right now. But when we do, what a story I get to tell. How we did it. How we got through the challenge. Not everybody's going to make it. Well, we're all going to make it at some level. But the question is, what are you going to make of it? So think of it this way. I did a, I did a Facebook live a couple of years ago on July 4th. And I said, your freedom's at stake. Most shares and watches I've ever had. You probably could find it on my personal page or my fan page. Everybody watched it because they were worried. They thought it was conspiracy. They were worried about the government and deep state and all that other kind of crazy stuff. They're watching it. Right. And the biggest thing I said is your emotional freedom is really what's at stake. So tomorrow being July 4th, Congratulations. Um, if you live in a world that's free at some level, we can bitch, we can complain about our societies or what's going on. But what real freedom is, is the ability to choose. What real freedom is in our lives is emotional freedom. What real freedom is freedom to be creative and freedom to make some new rules. So although we're limited by some of the things around us right now, we're all dealing with it. We can't say we're not. Even if you're in Alaska, Australia, Spain, we're all dealing with different things right now. You got to appreciate the freedom we have as people to create, to think, to build, to have thoughts for yourself. And I'm going to tell you, if you turn off this thing and you turn off all the other stuff, I'm going to challenge you to take a couple of minutes and change your average over the next couple of days and really give yourself a minute and sit there in your backyard, sit there on a bench near your house, sit there in your living room and turn it off and realize you have freedom to create, freedom to believe freedom to dream. And I'm going to tell you, that's one of the things that it's a big thing that we need to remember how to do again is to dream and realize the dreams. Cause that's all this country is. America was a dream. It was, I was watching the Patriot last night with Mel Gibson. It's kind of funny. It's not even American to start with, but he's a great actor in that movie. And really what it was, was it was a dream. It was a dream. What we have, 
your country, wherever it is you live, all of it was. So I'm just going to think about this right now for you is how do you make that dream a reality in your life? What you have? I got one question here and I'm in manufacturing, she's saying, and I'm struggling with what message I must be given when so many people are either no longer working or really stressed with work overload and limited staff at their facility. How do I best influence them? Martha, where influence starts is with a conversation. We're going to have to start talking with people and asking what they want. We're start going to have to have conversations with people that the rules have changed. If you can get them on the phone, Martha, and you're manufacturing, you worked with them before, say, look, I know the world is changing and I know the rules are changing. And I'm also going to let you know, what is it that you want? What is it you're after and how can I help you? I'm also going to tell you that we're not stupid as a company. We're here to be flexible with you for whatever you need. Business will come back. Things will come back bigger and better than ever. If I've ever noticed anything in my life, everything has come back bigger and better and bolder than ever. And there's nothing different here. If you like what I'm saying, give it a like, give it a love. If you agree with what I'm saying, it will come back better. But Martha, we don't need to influence them. We need to connect and we need to call them and we need to connect. That was a great question you had. And you need to say, listen, I know the rules have changed. I know desires have changed, but needs are still out there. I would like to reassess your needs, reassess what you have. And I'm going to tell you our business right now is all about being flexible to figure things out within reason. How can we help? What can we do? And great relationships get built during challenging times. I'm excited to build ours together. That's how I would do it. Your salespeople, you connect and do it. You are welcome. So with that said, everybody, please share this. Take a second, literally go there and share this. Put this on your wall. My team, if you can put down below um, the Facebook example from our fan page, literally grab the share, put it here for them so they can do it. Join the Average Sucks community. Get the book. I'm going to recommend, like my friend Dan Newcomb says, have a few copies. One for the nightstand, one for work, one to share with somebody. I had a good friend named Mike Severett from high school, bought 20 copies for each kid of the hockey team. The reason why he did that is he wanted to teach kids how to live above average. It's our gift to give back to the world. Folks, we're going to transform right now. I even had a friend tell me at the doctor the other day, he said, Michael, viruses are known to evolve us as a species to make us stronger. It sucks when people get sick. It sucks when we lose people we care about. We're going through a transformation and a transition period in the world right now. And the question is, if you want to come out beautiful on the other side of this, you got to decide that now. And how you decide that is, are you going to use your freedoms to get where you want to go? The freedom to think and the freedom to avoid. And I'm going to give you the two freedoms right now, to think and to avoid. You know what you need to avoid and you know what you need to think. Start building that business and life you've always wanted. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you. Share and care. See you guys.